So uh, let's talk about credits. Um, so this is a, just a little like experience report or case study. Um, my name is Tim Lawson. I work uh, here in Berlin for um, a startup uh, called Vuga. And uh, Vuga does uh, social games, so Facebook games, basically. Um, yeah, and I, t today, so today I'm, t I'm talking about uh, one of those games. It's called uh, Happy Hospital. You're not the target demographic, probably. Um, so it's like a pet hospital where animals come in and you have to cure them. Um, and when we started um, one year ago, roughly, or last spring, um, we had two goals. So the first one, like the business goal for the game to be successful, it would have to be, it would have to have one million players per day at least. Um, and our like our technical goal was to have it um, to build this thing in a manner that was that it was easy to operate because um, we have this model where like. I work as a developer, so I develop the game, but I also operate the game once it's in production. So I want it to be simple, easy, and um, yeah, basically small. And the architecture is very simple. Of these, I mean, this is like the standard generic architecture. There, the actual game is 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 in Flash, running in the browser. And um, I'm just talking about the backend now, right? So the backend is what keeps track of the of the state of the hospital, what, what happens there, where, where the animals are. Um, and in our case, that's a Rails application talking to a database. No surprise so far. Um, but because of the, um, like the requirements I showed in the beginning, we decided early on that we were going to, uh, to use Redis as our main database. Because um, main reason, the main reason being that uh, we want to have a database that could really handle the the high throughput, the high write throughput that's needed if you have like a million people playing the, the same game, right? And there's obviously, it, you, it can be done with a relational database or other databases by um, sharding out, having four, eight, 12, 16 shards. But we wanted to keep it small and see how far we can go with maybe one or two database instances. Okay, so. Um, I'm not gonna go very much in detail like how Redis works. I just assume you have a basic understanding. It's a key value store. Um, so the first question now when using Redis is um, how do you structure the data that you're gonna put in this key value store? Um, and then the second question is like the, the setup. How are you gonna, like replication, persistence, how are, you, how, uh, how are you going to use the various options that Redis provides? Um, so for the data model, we, we chose a very simple approach. Just um, uh, of the many data structures that Redis offers, we, we only use uh, a single structure, the hash. Um, and basically, this hash uh, contains all the data of, of a single user, of a single player. And um, so we, we wrote a little mapping layer in Ruby to um, serialize the data into this hash. And then, so it looks like this, for example. Uh, so in, the, in Redis, the key, it's just the Facebook ID, and the value is uh, this hash. Um, so everything, is, and, and in this hash, there are again fields and values, and it's all strings, right? It looks like JSON, but it's all strings. It's, it's, it's uh, JSON serialized into a string, and then stored in Redis. Okay, so that's um, the data model, and it sort of developed a bit by accident, but uh, it, it, it proved very, um, very fortunate that we had this data model, and I'll explain, I'll come to that in a, mo in a moment. Um, and we started out with a, a very simple setup, like the, the classic Redis setup, uh, the same as you would do with MySQL. You have a database master um, and uh, a database slave uh, that gets uh, all the modifications replicated. Um, so the slave has, has two basic functions. It's there for failover if the master should go down. And uh, it's there to, uh, to handle the persistent stuff. In, in, in our case, we, we write uh, dumps on the slave to not to slow down the master, not to um, just to take load of the master. And we went, uh, so the, the, the game launched in, I think the beta was in, in August, and we launched with this setup. And it worked reasonably well for a certain time. Um, of course, then more and more people started to play. And um, we, we were prepared. Uh, we said, OK, no problem. Redis has um, virtual memory. 
So it's an in-memory database, but once you exceed the, like the, the amount of data exceeds the, the amount of memory you have, um, so it has a mechanism for swapping out uh, uh, the, the, the additional data to disk, like the operating system does, but it's implemented inside of Redis. And we turned this on uh, with the same setup, basically, still with replication. And this also worked pretty well, but only for a short time. Um, <laughs> so um, we, we sort of hit, like, we, we started to, to, to hit a wall uh, pretty quickly um, as we put in more data. Because, uh, so it turns out that, uh, in theory, it, like, from the documentation, we would have thought, yeah, it's like this combination is valid, but it turns out this is uh, actually not a valid um, uh, setup uh, with Redis um, virtual memory because it's like the virtual memory system is working fine, but it's not <laughs> working uh, with replication and it's not working with persistence turned on because it's just that. So there were very, we had various issues. It, like Redis was getting unstable, it was crashing, uh, it would consume tons of memory and would like very fast run out of memory, and we just couldn't get it to work this way. Um, so what we were left with was basically we, <laughs> we switched off replication, we switched off persistence, so now we have this in-memory database and it's still working fine. The only problem is like all the data is in memory, right? So like we have uh, a lot of people playing on Facebook, and, but if the server should go down, if we should lose power, if the process dies, everything is gone. This is, was, of course, not uh, a spot we would uh, li like to stay in very long. So um, uh, we did some quick thinking and came up with a new um, sort of like duct tape solution. Uh, we just wrote um, sort of like our own persistence mechanism for, um, we call it the dumper. That's a cron job that runs continuously in the background and just pulls out data and dumps it to disk. So the good thing is that like, if you have a, a million people playing, they will not all be playing at the same time, right? There's only a, a certain fraction, like let's say a percent or even less uh, online at any given time. And so what we would do is um, uh, 10 minutes after somebody started playing, we would first dump them out to disk. And if there's, not, like normally a session is only a few minutes. So but if they're still playing after 10 minutes, we will dump them out uh, a second time after another 10 minutes. And this way uh, we could make sure that um, if the master should go down, we would lose at, at most 10 minutes of data, right? The last 10 minutes of updates. Okay, so I mean, this is, um, this certainly worked and worked pretty well for, for a long time. Um, actually, we had, we, so we sort of, I think in, in January, we, 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 we turned this on and it has, has been running continuously until last week, basically. Um, when we went to a new setup. And so, in fact, the, the, the Redis was re running very, very stable with virtual memory. Um, we had the, slide, the Redis process had an uptime of 150 days or something and doing billions of operations in this time. Um, but still, it was kind of like a clunky setup. And now then, uh, we came to a point where we actually we had to do sharding. Uh, although we tried to avoid it as long as possible, but last week we had to, to try to, sh to, to begin to shard just because the, the throughput of Redis wasn't, wasn't uh, high enough anymore and we need um, to, to increase that. And so this is when we came to our final setup so, so far, uh, um, which is uh, the disk store option. This is something that, um, that Salvatore, the, the, the Redis guy, developed um, basically after it, in, in December, when we said, okay, this VM thing is totally not working for us, and it's just sort of broken, um, there were a lot of discussions on the mailing list, and uh, what came out of this was this disk store option, which is sort of like the improved virtual memory for Redis. And it basically works the same way as our, as our dumper, but, but it's not this duct tape, cron job, Ruby solution, but it's built into Redis, written in C. And this is what we're using now. And like I said, we do sharding. Um, so the cool thing is we have like two Redis processes running now on the same machine, and they're, they, they share the same disk store backend, which is just a lot of directories on the disk where the, the data gets written. Um, so we could easily go to three or four uh, shards on the same machine if we want to. Of course, we could also 
go to charge on di different machines, but it's more, more difficult to, to sync the data. So what's the current status? Um, so on a good day, we do like in the evening around 3,000 requests per second from, from the flash client to the backend. And that translates into roughly 35 to 40,000 Redis operations per second. Uh, super stable. And we can handle backend requests in like 10 milliseconds normally. Um, so what about the goals I showed you in the beginning? Um, actually, we, we, we are currently uh, on the leaderboard in place 45, having less than half a million players per day, unfortunately. So we are not there, or at least not there yet. It's, it's still growing, but it'll take a while to get there. Um, concerning the cluster size, um, there, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy to report that it's indeed a, a pretty small cluster. Um, so we have, um, I, I just counted the machines <laughs> that we're actually using last week, and it's, it's seven machines. Um, there are a few more because, um, we, of course, we have some like spare capacity. Um, but um, yeah, and so the, the interesting thing is those are all single, um, single processor machines. Um, and we selected them basically because they have a very high, uh, very high frequency, 3.3 gigahertz, and Redis being single-threaded. Uh, so the, the important, the most important thing for Redis is like the raw, raw speed of the machine, right? If it has six cores or eight cores, or if it has two CPUs, this, this doesn't help you a lot with Redis. Um, yeah, so the cluster is fairly small still. Um, so, um, just to sum it up, um, Redis, what are the highlights? It's, it's really, um, performance-wise, it's, really, um, it's really, really awesome. The, 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 the throughput is, is, is amazing, and there are no hiccups. It's just running 24-7, like I said, 150 days uptime, no, uh, no crashes, nothing. Um, and also, the, the community around Redis is very... Um, very helpful. You can ask questions. You get quick answers. You get feature requests handled uh, as well quickly. Um, there are some gotchas, of course. Um, so one thing is like the whole durability thing is a big challenge, of course. I, I mean, this being an in-memory database, this is more or less a given that durability is kind of like the weak spot or the the, the hard spot. Um, the other thing that's what's Maybe a bit more surprising is that also memory consumption 